Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. Today we have a different tumor that is adenomatoid or endogenic tumor or AOT. So last class uh, we had covered a CEOT that is calcifying epithelial or endogenic tumor. From the name itself we will get an idea about the tumor. So this is adenomatoid or endogenic tumor anyway. Odontogenic is something related to tooth or tooth forming tissues that is clear. So adenomatoid is adeno means something related to gland. So this tumor has peculiar gland like uh, appearance or gland like structures that is why this got adenomatoid or endogenic tumor. Now let's get into details of AOT. So adenomatoid or endogenic tumor. As the name suggests, it is a gland like structure formation and histological features. That's why it got this peculiar name. So we'll come to that later. Now let's see the basic introduction of this. So it is also known as adenoameloblastoma or ameloblastic adenomatoid tumor. So it is uh, always or sometimes in the previous time misdiagnosed as amyloblastoma. That is why it got this name that is adenoameloblastoma and amyloblastic adenomatoid tumor. So the one of the differential diagnosis is amyloblastoma. So, AOT or adenomatoid or endogenic tumor which is benign in nature and non-invasive type but progressive lesion which is most commonly associated with unerupted maxillary canine. So I also mentioned it as hematomatous uh, lesion. Hematomatous is nothing but a disorganized uh, growth which is mimicking a neoplasm. But the difference between hematoma and a benign neoplasm is like its uh, growth rate uh, we cannot uh, measure. There is no measurable growth rate is there. Whereas a benign tumor has growth rate, measurable growth rate and it is uh, basically uh, composed of tissues of origin uh, within it is found. So it is not a particularly benign lesion. Hematomatous is little different from benign lesion. So it is most commonly seen, I mentioned it is most commonly seen with maxillary canine, mm, unerupted Mm, maxillary canine and it is the fourth most common odontogenic tumor so among odontogenic tumor it is the fourth most common one and it can be divided into two variants basically one is central that is uh, intraosseous and peripheral which is uh, extraosseous okay so it has uh, basically two types central intraosseous and peripheral extraosseous so the central variant that is the intraosseous type has follicular and extra follicular subtypes follicular and extra follicular the follicular type will be associated with an impacted tooth and is the one which commonly get confused with the dentigerous cyst. So it has central and peripheral that is intraosseous and extraosseous. Intraosseous again has subtypes which is follicular and uh, extra follicular. Follicular is uh, the one which is associated with an impacted tooth and which is commonly uh, get confused as dentigerous cyst. So sometimes it is also seen that uh, cases with both AOT and uh, dentigerous cyst. Sometimes it get confused. So sometimes very rarely both AOT and dentigerous cyst will be there in the same place. In the two to three decade, that is 20 to 30 years, or the 10 to 20 or 20 to 30 years, that is a second and third decade. And it is most commonly or mostly seen in anterior part of maxilla. It is slowly enlarging a swelling type. Sometimes the gums will be very swollen 
the gingiva will be very swollen and it is associated with an impacted tooth and mostly a maxillary canine so females are most commonly affected than males maxilla is affected than mandible anterior part is affected than the posterior jaw so it is seen in second and third decade anterior maxilla is mostly affected it is a slowly enlarging swelling which is associated with impacted tooth so when you are studying aot that is adenomatoid odontogenic tumor the two key points are it is like a adenomatoid that is a gland like structures are present and another thing is it is associated with unerupted maxillary canine so these two are the takeaway points of aot it has the adenomatoid structures that is gland like structures adeno is nothing but gland like and it is associated with unerupted maxillary canine now we'll move on to the radiographic features so radiographic features basically it is a radio lucent lesion and well defined radio lucent lesion and sometimes it gets calcified in some areas or some cases it get calcified few areas the those areas will be uh, shown in radiograph as radio opacities and it is associated with as we know an unerupted tooth and it sometimes looks like a dentigerous cyst so dentigerous cyst also associated with an erupted tooth so it sometimes uh, misdiagnosed as dentigerous cyst now move on to the histology histology part is the uh, most important part there we have this adenomatoid structures so it is a well encapsulated solid or partly cystic lesions so it is well encapsulated solid or partly cystic lesion so on histology it shows sheets strands and whole masses of epithelium which differentiate into columnar ameloblast like cells so can roughly seen the columnar type cells columnar type cells this is not a very a uh, good picture i just want to show the duct like structures with columnar cells uh, aligned at the periphery so sheets strands or whole masses of epithelium so epithelium is differentiated so epithelium is changed into columnar ameloblast like cells which forms it. so these columnar cells forming the duct or tubule like structures so this is a tubule like structure so that's why it got this peculiar name that is adenomatoid tumor because of its tubule like structures how this tubule like structure forming because the columnar cells differentiated or arranged themselves like this making a duct like or tubule like structures so it has a central space containing homogeneous eosinophilic rim of various thickness so that ring is particularly known as hyaline ring so it forms as a hyaline ring and the other features like stellate reticulum like spindle cells occasional round or polygonal epithelial cell which dominate the tissue between cell rich nodules so that is just a histological characteristics the stellate reticulum like spindle cells occasional round or polygonal epithelial cells which dominate the tissue between cell rich nodules and small amount of eosinophilic material or calcification also may be present between the cells so little bit of calcification or eosinophilic material also seen between the cells so this is the duct like structure so this is the duct like structures lined by one or two columnar cells so these are the columnar cells which is lining the duct like structure so this is the characteristic feature of aot so this is a key point this is a take away point that is a duct like structure 
in histology so if you are seeing a histology slide also it is very easy to understand aot so there will be a duct like structure how this is forming this is by differentiation of columnar cells columnar cells arranged at the periphery one or two columnar cells making a duct like structure so adenomatoid or endogenic tumor is also known as adenoameloblastoma or ameloblastic adenomatoid tumor so the two key points are it is associated with unerupted maxillary canine and it has adeno uh, duct like or tubule like structures with columnar cells at the borders and the treatment is most commonly it is enucleated uh, it is basically a conservative surgical excision uh, rather than the radical one and it is most commonly it does not